Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to do two solved examples based on the topic relationship between equilibrium constant, the reaction quotient and Gibbs free energy. Now, the first question is question 7.10. It is the solved example of your NCRT textbook. The question reads, the value of delta G negative or delta G naught that is standard free energy change for the phosphorylation of glucose in glycolysis is 13.8 kilojoules per mole. Find the value of Kc at 298 Kelvin. Let us solve this problem. What is given to us? Delta G naught is given to us and for the phosphorylation is equal to 13.8 kilojoules per mole. Let us convert this into joules per mole. It would be equal to 13.8 into 10 to the power 3 joules per mole. Now we know from the video of part 15 that delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln Kc, where Kc is the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, R is the gas constant and T is the absolute temperature. So the value of delta G for phosphorylation is given to us and you have to find the value of Kc. So we are looking for ln Kc. So we take the rest to one side. So ln Kc log of Kc is equal to delta G naught upon RT and all of this becomes negative. Right? Now we have the values. This is minus delta G naught would be 13.8 into 10 to the power 3 joules per mole, right? And divided by R is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, right? Into T, what is the temperature given to us? 298 Kelvin, which is the, which is the, standard temperature. Now look at the units, the joules per mole, they get cancelled. Per Kelvin and Kelvin, it gets cancelled. And LNKC should be a numerical value, it should be a number. And that's what we get when you solve this, LNKC comes out to be equal to <coughs> minus 5.569. Minus 5.569. In order to remove this value of ln, we take the antilog, taking antilog on both sides, taking antilog on both sides, we get Kc, antilog of ln Kc would be Kc, is equal to e to the power of minus 5.569. And when you solve this and you find the value of this, it comes out to be equal to 3.81 into 10 to the power minus 3. 3.81 into 10 to the power minus 3 is the value of Kc. Right? So, it's a very simple problem. We were given the value of delta G0. And in the equation, delta G0 is minus RT ln Kc. We've substituted the values and found out the value of Kc. One more problem. Just to explain this relationship. Hydrolysis of sucrose gives you sucrose plus water gives you glucose and fructose is the equation. The formulae have been avoided because they are a little complex and it really doesn't matter what they are because our interest is in the stoichiometry of the reaction. So sucrose and water give you glucose and fructose. Equilibrium constant for this reaction is 2 into 10 to the power 13 at 300 Kelvin. You have to calculate delta G0 at 300 Kelvin. Delta G0 actually should be at 298 Kelvin because the standard temperature is 298 Kelvin. But what the temperature that we've been given is 300 Kelvin, which is just 2 degrees away from 298 Kelvin. So we assume that whatever data is given to us, that would be valid for delta G0, which is the free energy change at, under the standard conditions or the standard free energy change. So assuming this to be okay and ignoring the difference of just 2 degrees, We'll substitute the values. What is the formula? The formula is that delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln Kc. Right? And what are we given? 
equilibrium constant Kc is given to us 2 into 10 to the power 13 the temperature is given to us and delta G naught is to be calculated so delta G naught would be equal to minus what is our gas constant 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole right and temperature is 300 Kelvin and ln multiplied by log kc what is kc 2 into 10 to the power 30. now we cancel out the units k and k get cancelled out because here the k is in denominator it's a numerator and you're left with joules per mole so whatever numerical answer you get the unit for delta g naught would be delta g naught would be in joules per mole which is right the free energy change, the unit is joules per mole. And when you solve this, this comes out to be equal to minus 7.64 minus 7.64 into 10 to the power 4 joules per mole. 7.64 into 10 to the power 4 joules per mole. So this is the answer for this question. I hope with these two numerical problems, it becomes easier for you to understand what is the relationship and how do we use that relationship to calculate the variable in the equation which is not available to us. So if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.